What's going on, everyone? Welcome to another edition of my All-22 Reviews. I'm sorry I missed last week. I had important things to do down in Phoenix covering the Super Bowl. And for this episode, you got to talk about the Super Bowl, right? I got a full off-season of draft content and free agent content. So for one last time this year, let's talk about a game that just happened. I'm going over the top 10 biggest plays in the Super Bowl by swings and win percentage, okay? The biggest plays that impacted the game. That's how I best figure I can track that. So without further ado, let's get in, starting with number 10 and going all the way to number one, the most impactful plays in Super Bowl, what was it, 57? I hope that's right. The whole shot to Goddard on third and 14 might be the best throw I've ever seen Hertz make. I mean, what a dime at that moment in the Super Bowl. Pre-snap, this does indeed look like a cover two look with the two high safeties and corners in a cloud look sitting down close to the line of scrimmage. And the Eagles call a cover two beater, a smash concept with A.J. Brown and Devontae Smith running something underneath. And then you've got, I believe that's Quez Watkins and Dallas Goddard running these deep corner routes. The point of having your two biggest threats run those underneath routes instead of running past the sticks on third and 14 is you're hoping that keeps these corners down, right? Because that's Devontae Smith and that's AJ Brown. We got to run with them. And then that would open up your shot one-on-one. Dallas Goddard with a safety, Brian Cook, or Quez Watkins with a safety, Juan Thornhill. Hertz kind of has to pick his matchup before the snap that he likes. Obviously, he likes Dallas Goddard on Brian Cook. And you can see as soon as that ball is snapped, that's his first read. That's where he always wants to throw. So on the perimeter, you've got a smash concept versus cover two. And in the trenches, the Chiefs are really trying to get a free runner here. They're trying to confuse the Eagles, stress their communication. You see at the snap of the football, Trent McDuffie is walking up like he's about to blitz. The body language of these two other intermediate defenders also suggests that they could be coming. They're really walked up, kind of leaning forward. And then what they're trying to do is hold the eyes of any of these linemen for just a second on these potential blitzers and then sneak in a stunt with Chris Jones and Carlos Dunlap. But the Eagles are not fooled. Their eyes are perfect. They deal with this great. Hertz has a perfect pocket all day to throw, lines up, and puts this ball right where it needs to be, the only place where it could have been. Legereus Need does not care that A.J. Brown is breaking his route off underneath. He understands that he has to protect the sticks. He sinks properly. Doesn't matter. You can't beat perfect offense, even if you're playing very good defense. And that was perfect offense. The second most important play of the Super Bowl was the deep touchdown to A.J. Brown. And the debate that rages on is, was this a good throw by Jalen Hurts? And I intend to answer that question. The answer to that question is no, in my opinion. I think that this is a cover four man match type of defense here when aj brown releases vertically trent mcduffie takes that runs with him he knows he's got inside help which is the safety so he runs a little bit outside of brown he's bracketed both inside and outside by mcduffie and i think that's Juan thornhill the safety meanwhile on the other side of the field you've got a big crossing route by Devonte smith now in man match, this co- this corner would take anything vertically for sure, but with a hard release inside, he's going to pass it off and off of the play action, Nick Bolton is going to robot, which is turn around, find the crossers, run with it. And so there you've got Nick Bolton on Devontae Smith and Devontae Smith has already outran him. This is wide open right here with AJ Brown taking the top off the defense. The correct throw here, the smart throw is to Smith. Throwing a true 50-50 ball is frowned upon as a quarterback. And when Hertz lets this thing go, this is a true jump ball situation to A.J. Brown. And it just comes down to can he win at the catch point, which is not a bad gamble. uh, But like I said, Devontae Smith is wide open. So I think this was a questionable decision to throw this ball. But you do have to give Hertz some credit He kept it out of the way of the safety, Juan Thornhill, so it wasn't a two-on-one situation, 
But I think most of the credit on this play goes to A.J. Brown, as I already pointed out on Twitter. Right there, you can see him slow up, raise his arms. So McDuffie thinks the ball is about to land right where Brown currently is. McDuffie jumps a little bit right there. Then Brown just zooms past him, flashes late hands, and makes the catch. That is some ridiculous ball tracking ability and misdirection and deception deep down the field. I think that this is one of the best plays a receiver made all year. You may be wondering why a game-winning kick isn't higher on this list, but their chances to win were already pretty high before he kicked this. It was just the final nail in the coffin. I don't have too much to say about it other than it kind of seems like number 28 would have been very close to blocking this if he didn't slip because the field was so bad and it was one of a million people that slipped in this game. But I don't know. If he doesn't stumble out of the gates here, it kind of seems like he would have gotten very close to this ball. Very close indeed. So that's all I got to say about this. It's a field goal. <laughs> The seventh biggest play of the Super Bowl was the Kadarius Tony touchdown, and this happened on a third down and three. So this was a chance for a huge stop by Philadelphia's defense. Instead, Tony obviously scores. The Chiefs take the lead. Philadelphia can't really recover from this. And the pre-snap motion totally broke Philly's defense here. I'm not totally sure what happened, but let me give it my best guess. So when Tony takes off across the field, they want the safety, Gardner Johnson, to come down and take care of that. They don't want these corners working all the way through the mess of the middle of the field to get to Tony. They think he'll get, they'll get screened or chipped and Tony will be wide open over here. So they want the safety to come down and do it. But both Maddox and Slay think they have to take Gardner Johnson's spot in the middle of the field here up top. Like both of these guys are starting to sink backwards. They both think they're supposed to be where Maddox is, or Gardner Johnson is supposed to be. And so now all three of them are in the same spot. All of them lose outside leverage on both Kelsey and Tony. And it's a wide open touchdown. Yeah, that miss by Butker was honestly a pretty big deal. Anytime you drive inside the 25 yard line and come away with zero points, that hurts. That's a big swing. And what was supposed to happen here and where Butker went wrong you're supposed to get it in between the big yellow uprights here, the two big sticks. But as you can see, he hooked it left and it bounced off the upright and deflected out. See, if it would have deflected in, it would have been a good field goal. But it, because it deflected out, it was actually worth zero points. And uh, the score remained seven to seven. As you can see, the ref arms extended. That's the no good signal. Um, which let everybody know that it did not, in fact, count. Yeah, the Hurts scramble was a huge moment in the game. Remember, it was fourth down and five, so the Chiefs could have gotten the ball back with great field position here. Instead, they allow an explosive play, end up basically guaranteeing the Eagles some points. This was a really nifty play call that uses Chris Jones' pass rushing prowess and aggressiveness against him. This is a draw play. Initially, everything looks like a pass. Hertz is dropping back. All the linemen are in pass protection sets moving backwards. And so these two defensive backs who could, if this was a run, insert themselves into the box pretty easily. They drop back. They've got eyes on the receivers. It's man coverage trying to force an incompletion. And this turns into a five on six situation. And it may look like a five on five situation because there's always five offensive linemen. And in this case, there are five guys in the box. But when there are five offensive linemen, there are one, two, three, four, five, six gaps to run through. So it's really a five on six situation. And what they end up doing here is Kelsey pulls through the B gap and that moves Bolton over. And if you want a two gap, you have to engage slowly with a tackle and be able to move through both to both sides of him. Jones is trying to penetrate to, through one gap to pass rush very aggressively, and that plays right into what they want to do. The right guard just is like, okay, he lets him pass by, then just pushes him up field, and Hertz has a massive hole to run through. They have moved Bolton out of the way by moving the gap with Kelsey, 
And then they trusted that Chris Jones would not respect the threat of the draw and just fly up field, which is exactly what they did. And then it comes down to Michael Dana, I believe, that is making a play in space. He can't do it. And Hertz is off to the races, getting to about the 15-yard line here. The situation here, in case you need a refresher, is the Eagles had just tied the game with a two-point conversion. The Chiefs are going down to try to win the game, and they gave up this big scramble to Mahomes that set him up for the eventual chip shot game-winning field goal. Now, the concept here, they motion across the field. They don't double back halfway through this time, which I'm sure made the Eagles happy because that's, that's what they were prepared for. They were prepared for a guy going across the entire formation. And they do a good job taking care of that. The design here, you've got a bunch of guys kind of working vertically, this big wheel route. He's working vertically and eventually settles down. Same deal here. And then you've got Kelsey with some chip help. And as he's doing that, maybe you're hoping that these linebackers get way too much depth dealing with these vertical releases. Then then Kelsey, they kind of lose him in the mess. He releases out. He's wide open. You throw him the ball, it's a big chunk play, breaks a tackle or something like that. But nice job at the linebacker, not getting distracted by all that. He's on top of Kelsey. At the top of Mahomes' drop, everyone is locked up. There's nothing there, there's nothing there. This wheel route is capped. So the secondary is doing a good job here, but there needs to be more layering in their pass rush. Usually you want to have one guy working deep around the arc and then maybe some bull rushes from the interior to create pressure or clean up anybody who steps up. Or maybe you want the other edge rusher to kind of counter, spin inside, and there's nowhere for Mahomes to go. But in this case, everyone on that Eagles pass rush tries to win around the outside shoulder of their guy, and that creates this big lane for Mahomes to step up in and run through. You've only got Jordan Davis there. He's the only one. He's the last line of defense in the middle of the field, and he can't be in two places at once. Mahomes takes off to the left. Jordan Davis goes to stop him. He cuts back right. They they can't do anything about it. Obviously, they're playing man coverage. All eyes are on the receiver. There is no one to account for Mahomes' legs, and he's able to get a big chunk play out of this. Two guys maybe could have had a shot at him. This other linebacker, he's responsible for Pacheco. Pacheco looks like maybe he's going to run out into the flat right here. So 43 runs out into the flat. But Pacheco's not running a route at all. He's actually just chipping and then falls down. So 43, I get it. But if he was a little bit more patient and stayed in the middle of the field, he could have prevented this from being a chunk play. And then Gardner Johnson, the safety, I think is really late to react to Mahomes' scramble here, right? I get it. You have to stay back because at any point, Mahomes could just flick the wrist and on the run, hit something deep. But really, there's no routes back there. These guys have settled down. Uh, This tight end is capped by an elite corner and slay. Like At this point here, it's probably a worthy gamble to go downhill and try to stop Mahomes. And at this point here, Mahomes is just very clearly past the line of scrimmage. He's not going to throw it at all. And yet still, Gardner Johnson is not really reacting to this until Mahomes is like five yards downfield. Then when he tries to close downhill, he slips because the field was terrible. I mean, he could have made this probably a 15, 10 yard less gain than it was, but he was not a part of this play. The third biggest play of the day was the Nick Bolton fumble return touchdown. And you could argue this one should be number one. And I wouldn't even necessarily disagree with that, but it did happen a bit earlier in the game. So it wasn't quite a backbreaker the way that some other plays were. Now, I showed you a QB draw earlier in this video. Similar deal here. You get a man coverage look. So eyes aren't really going to be on the quarterback. Send these guys, you know, off to wherever. Clear everybody who could potentially be in the box out of the box. And then you've got a six gaps on five defenders situation. It should be all good, but they make a mistake. They double Chris Jones. And that's the gravity of having a defensive player of the year caliber player. Guys, I think maybe lose their minds. They're like, oh yeah, we got to get that guy. We got to get that guy. And there's kind of an oh shit moment. And now two guys are on him because he's so important and no one's on Nick Bolton. And Chris Jones one-on-one is a problem as well. 
but I'd rather face that problem than absolutely nobody on Nick Bolton. He shoots that gap, Hertz tries to make a miss, he loses focus, he drops the football, it's returned for a touchdown. And this is just how mistakes can compound on top of each other. There's a false start that moves them back. It would have been third and one, and this would have been a free first down because of the QB sneak, which is unstoppable. So that's a mistake. And then on top of that mistake, you get the double on Chris Jones, letting Nick Bolton run free. And then after that mistake, you accidentally drop the football. So mistake, 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 it all adds up and you can't let it add up. You may be surprised to see an Eagles play up this high, but this deep shot to Devontae Smith gave Philadelphia a very real chance to win after it looked like Kansas City had taken control of the game. What I think happened is the Chiefs put in a cover three man match call. So what that means is you're going to have the cover three look. You've got zone coverage indicators, the boundary corners. They've got eyes on the quarterback and hips towards the quarterback instead of on a man. You've got a single high safety with the weak side guy rotating down to be a hook defender. You've got the backer in the flat. Here's your hook defender. Here's your other hook defender. And then here's your other flat defender. But I think they put in a man match call. So based on the releases of the receivers, this could change into man coverage, right? And you see on this side, Reed sees Goddard releasing vertically. Everyone's releasing vertically. This is for verticals, which is very deadly against a cover three look because you've got two guys up the seams and whatever way this high safety goes, there's probably going to be a gap for Hertz to throw to. So this is a good call versus a cover three look. But if you match it, it could be okay. And you see when Goddard is releasing vertically, Reed is going to run with him. He's not going to stay in that hook zone. He's going to see that. Okay, we're going to run with him vertically. I think McDuffie is supposed to do the same thing to, I'm not totally sure who that is, <laughs> that receiver. I think he's supposed to carry him once he releases vertically. But instead, he passes him off. I think Legereus Sneed is like, oh, he wasn't supposed to do that. This throw is going to go right up the seam. I've got to go stop it. So there he goes. He breaks off. Devontae Smith, he hopes that the safety can cover for his mistake and get there. He can't. It's a coverage bust, and they're down at the two-yard line. That is what I think happened and gave the Eagles a great chance to win the game. And shout out the Philadelphia offensive line here. Jalen Hurts could have cooked Thanksgiving dinner back there. The biggest play in the entire Super Bowl was Kadarius Tony's punt return. And any of the speculation, was the trade worth it? Who won the deal? I get that Tony was a frustrating player. I get that he's always injured. But this play right here will always and forever be worth a third round pick. And the Chiefs always and forever will go down as the winners of this deal. No matter what Tony does in the future, he may never figure it out. He may never be a, a well-rounded receiver. He may always be a gadget guy. But just because he did this, yeah, that third round pick was worth it. And from the moment that I first saw him, I was like, that's the hardest guy to tackle in the NFL. And I know everybody's going to LeBron image me for that, but you can go back and look. Anyway, on turf that everyone had been slipping on all day, look at the cuts he's making as he meets this whole convoy of Eagles defenders, right? This is some ridiculous stuff. The way his legs contort and bend and his center of gravity shifts. This move on Zach Paschal, number three, should go down as one of the greatest moves ever as he backs up. Pascal just gets a fistful of Jersey and then he's able to reverse field. Nice job. Not outrunning his blockers. This is not Tony's top speed. He's casual, 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 casual gets down to the five yard line, sets up a touchdown that would put the e the chiefs, not the Eagles, excuse me, up eight. And I'll admit, I am not totally sure what to do when you cover punts. That's definitely something I'll have to look into more this offseason. But this can't be right. What the Eagles do cannot be right. You've got both gunners working their way down the left sideline. You got a couple people from punt protection going that way as well. But most are going right 
here. This kick goes right. The blockers are following the gunners this way, and there are no blockers to this side of the field, and there are a bunch of unblocked Eagles defenders going that way. Once Tony catches this, there is simply no way he is scoring up the left sideline. There are four unblocked guys, arguably five. There are five unblocked guys ready to make a play there. So if you're number 53 or you're number 28 or you're any of these guys, you got to be ready to contain in case he reverses field because that's where all of his blockers are. But that's not what happens. 53, despite the fact that they got plenty of unblocked guys to take care of Tony, 53 runs over there as well, as does 28. There is no one to account for the cutback. And once Tony hits that move, it's easy for him. It's easy for him. There are no contained players. I just can't imagine that's the way it's supposed to go. And I got to shout out the practice squad wide receiver, Marcus Kemp, on this play. He got a little bit of burn last week because everyone was hurt. But this is A-plus effort. He's hitting the Jets, flying upfield, locates number 28, and makes a key block right there, knocking him to the ground. Tony's journey probably ends around here if he doesn't make that play. Kemp stays upright, finds the next guy to block, lays a shot on him, and Tony's able to stumble forward for about another five yards because Kemp did that. Kemp is pumped. He knows that he sprung that for about 25 extra yards, and he's letting the crowd know about it. And that just goes to show it's the ultimate team game. A practice squad receiver contributing on special teams could have been the difference between winning and losing this game for the Chiefs, right? Who knows what happens if Tony doesn't get down to the five-yard line there. The Eagles could very easily win the Super Bowl if that doesn't happen. And I think that's what's the most beautiful thing of all about football. And that's that. It was a great Super Bowl. Those were the biggest plays in the game. I found these on rbsdm.com. You can find every win percentage swing from every play, from every game in the last couple seasons on that website. So feel free to check that out. It's a great resource with a couple other things on that website as well. But anyway, thank you so much for following along this regular season. I'm not taking any break. I'll be back next week probably talking about some draft stuff. But if the regular season is more your thing, thank you so much for following along. Again, I'm not taking any kind of break, but just got to shout out all you guys for watching and I'll see you next week. Thank you.